at Oshkosh, one of the uh, really unique things that uh, has appeared near the Brown Arch is the Ascender uh, from Vision Aircraft. And with us is the creator, uh, designer and pilot of that, Alec Wild. Alec, uh, what an amazing aeroplane. Uh, can you tell us how this came to be? Um, well, I come from Super Cubs and bush flying and uh, thousands of hours spent uh, bush flying and thinking of how we can improve that experience. Okay, uh, so uh, you, I think before you had the Ascender, you had an amazing aeroplane called the Double Ender, didn't you? And this aeroplane is an kind of evolutionary step from that aeroplane? Yeah, so the Double Ender was a twin-engine Rotax uh, tandem seater and great performer. Um, but from the beginning, we always wanted to do a side-by-side. -side. I want a, a passenger to be able to enjoy the same thing as a pilot. Um, and we kind of took everything we learned from the research and development we did for the Double Ender and then incorporated it into uh, this airplane, which is more utilitary, uh, utility oriented and um, yeah, being able to haul more people and more gear. And so, um, so details of it, it's, so is it kind of Super Cub wings and then a, obviously a pretty unique fuselage? So... Pretty much everything on it is custom. Uh, the airfoil is a Super Cub airfoil, but all the parts inside the wing are custom. Um, the flaps are custom, the ailerons are custom. Uh, fuselage was designed from scratch. Um, yeah, there's still a little bit of resemblance to Cub on the tail. Uh, the elevator and the rudder is a little bit bigger, but it's Cub style. Okay, and uh, obviously, the, one of the things, apart from the amazing, beautifully curved nose and all the glass, that people will notice is the fact that the engine is on top. That's a Lycoming IO390. How come you put it where you did? To get the visibility. <laughs> yeah, we had to get it out of the way. Um, and I'd rather have it on top so I can see where I'm going. Um, yeah. So I, I, I guess uh, one of the things that people think when you put the motor on top like that, do you get much pitching when you uh, when you open the throttle, or have you kind of found a way to kind of uh, negate for that? So it's a common question we get. Most people think back on the Lake Amphibian, which has a, a mid-wing and a very high uh, motor. So what you're really looking at is where is the thrust line compared to the cord line. And if those are very close together, you don't get much pitching moment. If they're far away from each other, you're going to start getting a lot of pitching moment. So actually, if you look at the airplane, the thrust line of the engine and the cord line are really close together, actually closer than most, uh, um, like a Super Cub or something like that, you have a wider spread. Uh, so the pitching moment is actually really small. Yeah. And, um, and kind of slow speed uh, capabilities, what, uh, what's your stall speed and, and kind of what sort of distances can you operate in? So we land at about 40 miles an hour, uh, stall at about 35 miles an hour. Um, cruise at 105 miles an hour at 75% power, 95 miles an hour at 65% power. Uh, landing distances and takeoff when I'm light, playing around about 100 feet. Uh, when you load it up to gross weight, then it uses up quite a bit more runway. Okay, and um, in terms of uh, materials in the aeroplane, just I, is it mostly kind of regular steel tube or have you got some sophisticated kind of materials in there as well? No, the fuselage is a 4130 chromoly. Yeah. Um, the wings, a lot of it's aluminum, uh, aluminium. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, all the, the cowling is carbon fiber. And uh, the, those flaps, they look pretty sophisticated. Are they um, they're kind of special for the aeroplane? Yeah, so we designed these flaps uh, in partnership uh, with Doug Keller, who is uh, an engineer who worked on this airplane. Uh, we ended up getting an STC for them for the Super Cub, so you can now buy them and retrofit them on Super Cubs. Uh, Airframes Alaska now sells that, and we retain the rights to use them on our prototypes. So they're double-slotted flaps, um, and yeah, they're really great for being able to slow down, and uh, uh, for the kind of operations we do on the bush, they work really nicely. Okay. And so going forward, uh, after Oshkosh, what are your plans? Is it going to be a kit or are you going to produce it as a kind of limited production aeroplane? Uh, at this stage, we're not offering kits. Uh, if somebody wants them, we're going to offer some factory assisted home builds. Um, potentially at a later stage, they might look at kits. And I guess the, the big question is, how much might someone pay for uh, to get their own Ascender? Uh, by the time the airplane is fully built, you'll probably have about 600,000 into it. No. And uh, if people want to find out more, where should they go? 
Uh, you can go to visionaircraft.com, uh, vision-slash-aircraft.com. Yep. Well, Alec, it's, I think it's fair to say that this is one of the stars of the show, and we wish you well with it, and uh, I hope you enjoy flying it. <laughs>